Hey guys, we're going to continue looking at polar coordinates, and in this particular one we're changing a polar, a rectangular equation that has x's and y's into a polar equation that only contains r's and theta. Now, this is, if you do the math, this is a, um, a circle. So x squared plus y squared, that's a circle, even though we've got a minus 2x, that's just shifting our circle off center. So this is just a, sh a circle that is not centered at the origin. Okay, so what does this thing look like in polar coordinates? Well, what we're going to use is the fact that x squared uh, is r cosine theta and y is equal to r sine theta. So everywhere you see an x, I've replaced it with r cosine theta. Everywhere you see a y, I've replaced it with r sine theta. And then the next thing we do is just simplify. r cosine theta squared is r squared cosine squared. Multiply the negative 2 times this, get negative 2r cosine theta. Uh, square this, you get r squared sine squared. Okay, now notice there's an r squared cosine and an r squared sine. If I combine those together, I can pull the r squared out, and then I have the cosine squared plus sine squared. So this line, all I've done is I've kind of reordered, put this and this together pull the r squared out and I'm left with cosine squared plus sine squared. All right, and then there's the minus 2r cosine. Cosine squared plus sine squared, well, that's equal to 1. So this becomes r squared times 1, and that's r squared minus 2r cosine theta. So this is equal to 1, so it's just the r squared that's on the, the front of it. So uh, continuing on, if I did um, r squared minus 2r cosine theta, if I pull an r out of that, I get this, r times r minus 2 cosine theta. So again, that's just this equation in red. And I just factored a common r out. And now that I have it factored set equal to 0, I can set each part equal to 0. So r could be 0, or r minus 2 cosine theta could be 0. All right, r, remember, r is the distance a, a polar point is from the origin. If the polar point distance from the origin is 0, that means that's the origin. So this equation, r equals 0, is literally just the origin. So that's a single point. That's not a, obviously not a circle. But this guy right here, r minus 2 cosine theta equals 0. Or if I add 2, cos, two cosine theta to both sides of the equation, I get r equals 2 cos 2. I get r equals 2 cosine theta. That is the same equation as what we started with. Okay, and what I have here, this says that click here to interact. This opens up a um, thing in Desmos that I've created for you guys so you can see how a polar graph works. So here is x squared minus 2x plus y squared. That's that red circle that we saw, or that circle that we saw just a little bit ago. It's been shifted over one unit like I was mentioning. And here's what we ended up with, r equals 2 cosine theta. Now I've got t, t is my angle. I'm substituting that for theta in this notation. But t is my angle, and I'm saying I'm going to graph this when r is, uh, I mean when the angle is less than pi. But this is the, the uh, circle, so if I take it away, there's nothing there. Okay. This in blue is what happens if I start increasing the angle. And if you notice... This line that's forming, this is R. This is how we're stretching R as theta changes. So let's think about this. What is the cosine of when I start off zero? What's the cosine of zero? The cosine of zero is one. All right, look on your unit circle. Cosine of zero is one. Cosine of zero times two is two. So R is equal to two. The radius from the, the distance from the origin out is two at an angle of zero. All right, and now what happens as theta increases? As I move this up, now I'm at like pi over 12, all right? There's pi over six, roughly. Try to get on it, there we go. Um, what is the cosine of pi over six? The cosine of pi over six is the square root of three over two. Double that, this is the square root of three. So now our radius is the square root of three. It was 2, but as we're increasing the angle, the cosine is shrinking, 
and you know we're doubling that but it's we're doubling a shrinking amount so r as we rotate r is getting smaller and the more we ro rotate the smaller r gets all right all the way up until we get to like there's pi over three there's an angle of pi over three so this is my angle of rotation this is theta this is what i'm calling t all right so i've rotated to pi over three what's the cosine of pi over three it's a half two times a half is one and notice we're on the one circle all right so we started off at two and as we rotate we're shrinking at pi over three we're cut in half all right we're at one all right and then finally what is the cosine if i go all the way up to 90 degrees pi over two what's the cosine of pi over two it is zero all right now the dashed line in here that represents the angle we've rotated that dashed red line so we've rotated 90 degrees the black line is r it's what r is equal to when we do this okay so i've rotated 90 degrees now here's here's where you got to remember what happens when r is negative as i rotate into quadrant two all right i'm into quadrant two now I've, my angle is obtuse i'm beyond 90 degrees i'm beyond pi over two what's the cosine remember cosine is the x coordinate what's the cosine of an obtuse angle it's negative so when theta is greater than 90 the cosine of theta is negative r is a negative number and since it's negative, notice what's happening. We're going back through the origin in the other direction. All right, look on your unit circle. What is the cosine of 2 pi over 3? It's negative a half. Negative a half times 2 is negative 1. All right, we've rotated this amount. We go back through the origin, the distance of r, which is negative 1. All right, we're going back through the origin that amount. And as I rotate more, now R is growing in absolute value, but it's becoming more and more negative until finally we get all the way to pi. And what happens at pi? The cosine is negative 1. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. So I've rotated this angle, but because I'm going negative, I'm back through the origin 2 units. So I'm all the way back here. All right, so that's between 0 and pi. Now, what happens after that? Well, I've already made an, a complete circle. So what happens after that is I'm going through it again. And that's a brownish color. It's supposed to be green. Let me pull that green to the front. All right, so now that I got down to the front of the red, uh, 2 cosine theta, but now when the angle is bigger than pi. And so when it's bigger than pi, we're rotating again. And now this green circle happens. And between pi and 2 pi it just circles the the uh, graph again so again let me just go through it so you can see I start rotating it sh it's shrinking the whole time now it's going negative so we're going back the opposite direction of the origin as I rotate that angle at pi radians I've made one complete circle but as I rotate uh, all the way 0 to 2 pi it's going to just cut the circle out again so that is a polar equation. So that graph, x squared minus 2x plus y squared equals 0, is the same thing as r equals 2 cosine theta. Much simpler looking um, formula you know, with, uh, in the polar form, r and theta. Just a simple doubling of the cosine function, where here we got Squaring going on, if I solved it for y, there'd be square roots. It'd be a messy equation. But again, in, in uh, polar, it's a, it's a very um, efficient, just minimal uh, work going on.